Me being in the hood, and I see a roach crawling at the wild, and I just get in the roach mind, like, why do you like to crawl? And make a dope ass banger. Man. I'm just being. <laughs> Say, it is real, man. Say, that, that, that is called genius. That's pure genius, man. Genius. Artistry, man. And that's what artists do, man. You know, we, co we go inside, man, in the lab. And we just come up with stuff. You don't even have to be in the lab. You could be walking and things just come to your mind. Have you ever just been, been you could you could be in a room full of people and yeah. there's, there's a song that come in your head, just a verse. Yeah. Like, oh man, I, oh, I need to write that down. You I've, know? Written, I've written plenty of songs in my head. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, I'm pretty much old school when it comes to writing songs. I like writing my stuff. When I was younger, I, you know, uh, when I was younger, I used to just write a song, a whole song in my head. I'd be at school and then get home and then write the song down after I'd written it in my head, you know. But now, you know, being more uh, more mature in in, uh, in my profession, I'm beginning to write songs down uh, so that I can I can remember, you know, exactly how I how I wrote it, get the, the right feeling, you know what I mean. And so when I'm ready to come back to that song, even if the music changed, I still remember the words, you know. And so uh, just being a little bit more um, uh, mature in in the way I handle those songwriting. Situation, man, because you know, you know how the brain works. When, when you be thinking about something one time, and then something happened, then you go to thinking about this, and now you you forgot about, you know, what I mean, yeah, what, what, yeah. what you what you wrote, you know, yeah, what, yeah. what idea that came. So I want to keep every idea that you know that God bring to me, so that I'm able to, um, I'm able to, uh, to be successful at the vision that He give me, you know. So yeah. So how did you get started? Who inspired you? to become a singer. I noticed you said that no one in your family was a singer. Uh, so who inspired you to become a singer? Me and my cousin, uh, grandmother, man, we, we was at the same church. I went to the church in, uh, in Roy City. And um, I mean, it was a small church. Um, and, my, and my cousin, Granny, man, I used to sit on the front row and just, just watch her sing, you know what I mean? And that's pretty much where I started as far as singing. And when he came to playing, there was a deacon at the church. He didn't know how to play, but he would show me few little keys, you know what I mean, and so which triggered my interest, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and so, and you know, one thing led to another, and one day my granny came to me and my cousins, and she was like, oh, I got this song I want y'all to learn, and um, and it was Lee Williams, uh, which is a gospel singer, quartet, mm -hmm. it's Lee Williams, um, Every Step I Take, and it got me and my cousins together, and my mom and their moms got together and created a little dance group, I mean, little dance routine mm -hmm. to the song, and you know what I mean, and after a week later, you know, my granny heard the song, us singing it, and then she was kind of like our little manager for like five or six years. And so we went from singing gospel quartet, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much how I got started. So how, how I know back in the day, uh, when you tried to switch from singing gospel to R&B, mm -hmm. they kind of had a thing with that, where they call it like secular right. music. Right. Uh, how did your family take from you transacting, transactioning from gospel to R&B? Actually, my, my transition um, really didn't happen until uh, my 20s. I actually uh, was afraid of what people would think in the church world because I am uh, involved. I'm in church. I am uh, a musician in church every Sunday. And so um, I've always had, like, this pull in me, like, there's a different crowd and a different generation to reach. Um, I, I do believe in Jesus Christ. I do believe that. Um, my calling is to one day, you know, do his will. However, I do know that there is a generation of young people that, that need me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, once I begin to understand who I am in Christ, 
um, I, 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 I didn't go through that identity crisis of what somebody else think as long as yeah. I'm doing the will of God. You know, so it wasn't until like my, my 20, 22, 22, um, I really um, was just like, you know, forget it. I had an opportunity to even start out with, with a guy named uh, Lil Yella at the time. You know, and so uh, uh, because I didn't, I didn't want to do um, hip hop. Um, you know, there were some opportunities that passed, and you know, what 2013, 2018, which is what you know, a few years, you know, eight uh -huh. years go by. You know what I'm saying? And now the guy named you know Yellow Beezy, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Is you know on top. Yeah, on top, and you know, but those are the opportunities that. You know, a person miss when they're afraid of opinions and what people are going to say and not taking that leap of faith and just, you know, getting out there. You know what I mean? But now, you know, being uh, stable and not having that identity crisis and not caring about, you know, people who don't even pay my bills and their opinions. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to reach a masses of people, you know what I mean, that's going to accept what I do, you know what I'm saying, and what I have to bring. So, yeah. Right, right. So... You've been working with uh, Babyface, right? Yeah, I've been working with, with the legend himself, the Icon. Wow, now that it, itself, is that, that is something right there for a young brother of your caliber to be working with a man of that caliber. He, When you speak of music, Babyface is like one of the main people that come to your mind Absolutely. when you speak of music. Like He's a giant in the game, especially when it comes to R&B and ballads and the, the music that you're singing. So you're in the right field. It's like God put you right in the right place without having to go through all the other grind and scuffle and bustle that a lot of other people have to go through. So he's already showing you that he got your back, you know. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's actually crazy how that how that happened. Um, I had a surgery uh, April 1st of this year. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Jumpy Key had a a challenge. He he released a song called "I Made It Out," and he was wanting different people to jump on this challenge of singing um, about a minute uh, of his song. And um, I had made the video when I was in Las Vegas for a um, a business of music conference, and um, I had did the video and I had posted it. But then when I posted it, I deleted it because I was like, "Oh, this is trash." You know, what I mean, I ain't like it, so I deleted it. And then um, I, when I made it back from Las Vegas. I had the surgery and and the song pretty much kind of you know mirrored you know my 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 come out of the surgery you know my my success of the of the surgery and so I posted the video and you know one thing led to another thousands of people started liking it and then John P Key posted it to his page and wow um, um, and one of the bad players uh, Walt Barnes Jr. The bass player for for, for Babyface, he inboxed me and was just like, hey man, I got an opportunity that may change your life forever. Wow. You know, so it was nobody but the grace of God, you know, yeah. how I got the opportunity and, you know, and it, it was just another way of showing me that, you know, like, it don't matter, like, what you think a lot of times, you know what I mean? It's about the listeners of another person and how they feel when, when you open up your mouth and you deliver what God has given you. So, you know, that was, you know, it, it allowed me to not... Um, be fearful of what God has blessed me with and it, it gave me a new boldness So how did you take now that you are um, in a position that you are in you're working for Babyface and uh, You've been through the heart well, some of the hard part because it's still just the beginning. How do you uh, how do you? Take it now. How do you you know handle being on stage with Babyface and his crowd and then trying to work on establishing your own uh, identity in the music game at the same time. I think it's very important when dealing with icons in the industry to already be um, um, stable within your identity because if you're not stable then um, you pretty much kind of have um, itching ears and a, a wondering mind um, and um, you believe anything that anybody tell you and you kind of caught up in the hype. Mm -hmm. um, and my balance um, and that's pretty much where my balance come from because I already knew who I was before I started working for Babyface, you know what I'm saying? And it's an humbling experience. I think the higher I go, the higher God takes me, um, the more humble I become because I realize that it's nothing that I'm doing on my own, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing, it's no business relationships that, I'm not walking in the room and building those type of relationships. Like God is just placing people in my life 
And you know what I'm saying? And that's what we call favor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Favor is, favor is better than money. And so, um, you know, if they was to fire me today, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be hurt behind it because of the experience that I get to uh, hold on to. You know, everybody can't say that they've worked with Babyface. And exactly. so, um, it's an humbling experience, you know what I'm saying? And just being able to learn the business um, on a much larger scale is, is you know, is something within itself. Just being able to be backstage and, you know, and, and, and just learn, you know, yeah. is, is something. And so, you know, he don't owe me nothing. The company exactly. don't owe me nothing. The experience don't owe me nothing. Like, I've had a chance to travel across the world to, to sing with Babyface, you know what I'm saying? For that, I'm grateful. Is he still with Pebbles? Who? Pebbles. Well, wasn't he married to Pebbles oh. back in the day? No, uh, was that? Uh, no, he didn't. Really no, that wasn't Pebbles, my bad. Yeah. Who was that lady that managed uh, Tracy. TLC? Tracy. Tracy. Tracy Edwards. Tracy Edwards. Tracy. But, but Pebbles, wasn't she the one that uh, managed uh, TLC? And uh, yeah. they had something uh, that was going on with uh, Babyface back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, Babyface. I didn't mean to mix it up. I want your wife. Uh, like, who the hell is Pebbles? <laughs> but um, but you know, on a, on a safe note, you've been um, doing music for quite a while. When did you start? You said you was like a young little kid. I was when six. You were six years old singing in church. Yep. Now that you've done all this, uh, what do you see yourself in the, in the future? What are your future plans for your music? Um. Um. I have a business plan. Actually, music is like what I would call the crab shell, mm -hmm. the crab body of of my life. And the legs are different avenues of what um, I would like for my music to fund. Mm -hmm. And so, um, music is just it's just only one aspect of what I would like to accomplish in life. Mm -hmm. um, it is a dream um, to to. Uh, to make a living and, and to take care of my family and, and my and my children and my children's children to create general generational wealth. Um, but that's just one just one aspect. I don't I don't plan on just um, dying in the music. I plan on doing, you know, other things as well. So how do you feel about the uh, today's music industry? Um next question. Leave the field. Uh, before we got started, I told you, I said, I think you will have a, um, a successful uh, time uh, in the music industry if the Illuminati part is not real. Now, if that part is real, you may uh, come into some roadblocks. Uh, how do you, how would you address a situation like that? Um, ultimately, my, my final destination when it comes to genres is going to be gospel. Um, I'm, you know, I know, I know where I'm supposed to be at, you know, and, and that's where, like I say, I, I use this word because you have to really know who you are and who you are, you know, and if, if you don't, if you don't have your identity, you know what I mean, you'll fall for anything, and so, um, you know, that, that wouldn't even, can't nobody flash no amount of money in front of my face to, to, to turn on my God, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm loyal, that's what I operate on, I'm loyal to Jesus Christ, you know what I mean, so, that's that. Already, already. That's what's up. Uh, and I also wanted to ask you, um, how many projects have you done so far? How many songs do you have out? And and also, where can we find this music at? Um, you can find two singles that I've done. One I did in 2016, and the other one I just released, um, like I said, the earlier part of this year in May. Um, one is called What Is Life, which is an inspirational life song, um, just dealing with um, just my personal relationship with God, um, and then the second song is a, a personal relationship with me and my wife. It's actually, you know, both of them really mean something to me, and uh, you can find it on all digital platforms. And so, um, so those are my two two projects that I have out currently. Uh, now I'm working on uh, EP. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, shout out to uh, starving artists and GMC. You know what I mean for for believing in me and. Uh, my dream and my vision, and so um, yeah, you know, like the last the last track, the last single, "Run," is gonna be on the new EP. You know what I mean? And um, I got this next one. It's called "I Swear." Um, it's also I'm gonna give you a preview of that. That's also gonna be in the EP. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, now if you um, 
If you could work with anybody in the industry, who would you uh, prefer to work with? I'm already working with them. Already. <laughs> already. Already. <laughs> I'm already with them. Already. That's what's up. Shout out to Babyface, Shout man. Out. And if you need some more background singers, Babyface, I'm available. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, uh, do you want to give out any shots to anybody out there? Yeah, like I said, you know, shout out to Craig Sweet, starving artist. You know what I mean? And uh, GMC, Marcus Florence. You know what I mean? The whole GMC fam. Uh, my wife, you know, my mom. Just my whole support system. You know what I'm saying? I'm truly grateful for everybody that's in my corner. All right. Now, one more thing. If the, anyone wanted to do some work with you or get some features, yeah. how would they get in contact? Um, you can follow me on uh, our social media, D-E-E -E Walton, W-A-L-T-O-N, Music, M-U-S-I-C, on Instagram, Snapchat. Um, you can um, email me at dem.walton at yahoo.com. And uh, my cell phone number, 214-770-8237 for business inquiries only. Wow, he gave you the number. He gave you the digits. You know how dangerous that is for a man with a voice like that? You're going to have all kind of crazy women calling you. Hey, could you sing at me? I ain't got no voice, man. I ain't got no voice, man, set up. So, I'm good. Already, already, man. Well, you heard it here at Illinois Entertainment, man. We've had a great time. We really enjoyed you for stopping by, man. You, man. You're part of the family now, so feel free to let us know all the updates on what you're going to be doing. Okay and uh, everything with your music. Uh, the last thing, what would you say to the next up and coming artist that's striving to, uh, to be something like yourself? Man, don't allow people's opinions and don't even allow yourself to stop you. You know what I mean? Um, when it seems like um, you're running into roadblocks, that's only God telling you that this is not the way. Mm. You know, if it's, if it's working and if it's smooth, you know what I mean? It's, if it's doors are opening, that's God, you know what I mean? And you know, like I said, when you run into roadblocks, when you run into closed doors, God is just like, hey, this ain't it. And then when it's when it's finally it, you know what I mean, that door that no man can close is going to be open. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, keep going. Keep striving. Man, you heard it here first. Illinois Entertainment, man. We always got a word for you. And you sure got it today, man. Illinois, man. Check us out in just a minute. We have another special guest in here, man. What's that? Uh, Stage. Big state. Bigger state. Bigger state. It will be here in just a second, so you guys just stay tuned, and we'll be right back with you right here on Illinois Entertainment Radio. Illinois! Now back to the music, man. <laughs> 